All right, so I'm back with Chris from No Limit Squad, Chris Johnson. Uh, a lot of you guys who watch the channel already do watch him. I watch his stuff, super entertaining. I, I'm gonna, I told him before I started recording, I'm calling him the official isometrics guru on YouTube. And I think you, you get that title because I think, you know, if you're, if you're loud and passionate, which you are in all those things, in a good way loud, I mean, uh, you get that unofficial title. So I love, if you go on your channel, I think other channels, I'm not saying there's a lot of good isometric information out there, but you're covering it, I think, from a fan perspective like what does bruce lee do what's some of the best methods and answering really practical questions and i think doing so in like a really fun probably more engaging way than i do because you get way more cool cuts and funnier stuff going on than me but <laughs> so i wanted to have chris back on i i had him on before check out his channel I'll link his channel down below if you guys want to check him out so you get more information about him i'm not going to do like a whole intro and all that stuff but i'll link our previous video down below if you guys are curious i wanted to get his thoughts on a topic that a lot of you guys are asking about and I see it's coming up a lot. It's almost like a debated topic. And I see there's kind of a informal debate I've seen on the internet, which is I first want to get Chris's thoughts on using resistance bands. Cause I, I don't think I've seen him talk about that as much or maybe I lost some videos, uh, but also his thoughts with using bands, maybe in a conjunction, or I should say bands as an isometrics tool, but then also how you compare using isometrics compared to resistance bands, if I said that right, because I saw in the comment section and also on the internet, there is a debate about some people saying, like, instead of using bands, use an isometric strap. They're not going to break. They're The gains you can get from isometrics, the benefits from isometrics are awesome. They're super versatile. Again, they're portable. And a lot of you guys are in that camp of, like, minimalistic setup and wanting the best bang for your buck. And you're just in the isometric. So sorry for that long, huge intro. I just want to set the stage there because I got some point questions. But you can just jump right into anything else that kind of sticks out at you. Or you can maybe hit, hit on bands first, just with your thoughts on bands. Then we can kind of go from there. Um, I do like bands because they're, it's variable resistance. Um, with a lot of my older clients that I train, um, I tend to uh, go for more time under tension. So it does. It naturally kind of goes into isometrics and um, resistance bands Um uh, there are usually like these bands that you can purchase at Dick's and they go from like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, a hundred pounds. If you guys have ever seen like those colorful things with the straps on the side, you know, I know those are super versatile. You can literally pack them up. Like we had talked about earlier, bring them anywhere and you get a good freaking pump. Like you will feel that as long as the form is correct. I mean, it's great. Um, I would say that, uh, Bang for buck, I would probably err towards lifting, but that's just my opinion. Um, but it's not to say that um, that bands are bad. Um, I'll just pause there because I know there's going to be some band people going crazy right now. You just lit up a lot of people because they'll be like, well, bands are lifting, you know, that the, the, the resistance is just different. So, I mean, what do you mean? Do you have any more details on that? I mean, I know what you're saying. And that was a question I was going to ask you is, which I do find with the way I've been using bands, like I don't use them exclusively. I covered them a lot. You get an awesome pump as far as like an arm workout, bicep workout. I mean, if you want to guarantee a pump immediately, the question is, does that pump really correlate to really tangible muscle hypertrophy down the line? I think that's something that, um, again, I, I won't, I'll stop there, but any, just any thoughts about that as far as what do you, I guess maybe go in more detail or just a little more comments on that as far as like, if someone were, I guess, were to say you point blank, can you build muscle with resistance bands? Would you still st stare them away from that? Or are you saying like, just in general, you're saying bang for your buck, you'd still rather have more free weight equipment than just sticking to bands. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yeah. But um, yeah. And it's, it's good to, uh, it's good to bring this up because I still do like bands. Um, yes, you can definitely build a great physique and you can um, have a very well-rounded, um, you can have a very well-rounded workout routine with bands. And as long as, this is something I talk about on the channel with isometrics, as long as the load and time under tension is there, you can build a great physique. It's just those two things that have to be in place. And with bands, they are, you know, like even if we're having like the uh, X3 bar behind us and we're extending, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher as um, the extension goes out. The load is still there. The load was here and it got tougher as we extended out. Um, we had the time under tension, both the prerequisites check out and that's what we need. I mean, provided the diet and the cardio is right, you know, but like, yeah, that's, that's what's needed for, for growth. And it's there and it's, it's great in my opinion. So sorry to put the, again, I'm putting the hard questions on you. This was easy to dish on to someone else, but you, you do a lot of stuff with the like force velocity curve 
and just strength curves in general, talking about isometrics, and we can even get into that, but you have tons of good information talking about that. What are your thoughts then about that difference? Just to kind of, and we'll get, we'll go on to isometrics and the comparisons here, but that, board, that you think there's a substantial difference or something people are lacking if they were just to do variable resistance only versus just sticking to traditional free weights. So I basically, that, I guess, tangible question is, can you still get practical good results using that type of force curve or strength curve that's kind of backwards compared to traditional, you know, free weights? I see. Um, um, yeah, you still can. You would just have to hold it at the most difficult uh, point of resistance on the band. Um, so more than likely, it would end up just being, is the band that you have uh, heavy enough or does, you know, is the resistance of the band heavy enough for you? So those little 10 pound things are probably not going to be enough um, to stimulate a hypertrophy or strength response. Um, but if you get those nasty, like those thick green ones or whatever color they end up being um, and you hold it for time, some of those, you can't even extend a freaking inch and you're already, and you know, so like when we're talking about, if we're just talking about strength right now, um, and you get one of those super thick bands, you can even double them up, which I really like about bands, that you can double them or triple them. Um, the the response is still there because of, you you'd mentioned the force velocity curve. Um, if you're pushing so hard that the bands are fighting you back that much that they didn't move, that's OI right there. That's overcoming isometry. It's just a different... Um, it's a different uh, piece of equipment. It's like with a towel or a door or an isomax or a bolt worker or whatever. Um, that's pretty yeah, much what, it. What do you think about that? I guess transitioning into that with that, even just the slight give, because I know like even with the ISO chain and I mean, I'll flash in the screen if you know what I'm talking about, that had the little spring and the ISOMAX has pretty much these straps with no spring. That little give you get from the say ISO chain, that little spring action. And you actually put, I think the, the DIY thing you put together recently was awesome. I think that has spring in it too, right? Uh, it didn't, no. Oh, it didn't, oh, okay. But you could, but yeah, you could put a spring in that if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think there's something too, I guess, commenting on? So basically you're saying you pretty much could use a thick band for isometrics. And do you, do you think that little give makes a difference or is that a maybe a benefit or anything like that? No, no, not, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Now, if, if you're pushing to the point where it's really stretching, then you probably just need, at least from a, a OI perspective, probably need more resistance to fight you back so that you're not moving. Um, but yeah, like a little give is, is not really going to um, destroy any type of benefit or strength gain um, from that, that method of training. And you said, oh, I just, so people, yeah, what is that again? Just so people know so, who are doing so, a channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, OI stands for overcoming isometric training. Um, that's what, uh, Bruce Lee used to do, um, on his, uh, old ISO chain from the 1960s and, uh, Alexander Zass. So essentially it's just pushing or pull, pulling against an immovable object or force. So for example, just going up to a wall and trying to push it as if it were going to move, even though it's not. And, uh, because, you're exerting maximal force and you're going to get the best strength gains from that. So now kind of getting into like a heat of the matter too, uh, is let's say we're playing devil's advocate and I'm someone, I'll just say I'm super in favor of using a uh, isometrics device, like simple strap based system. And I've heard this argument a couple of times I've seen on the internet too, where people will say, Bands are inferior to isometrics in this sense that again, like I think I introduced it with this, they can snap, uh, they're not as versatile, the crazy stuff you can do. They're not nearly as cheap. These are super portable. Of course, bands are portable too. Uh, but then the question might come into kind of two parts questions. Do you have anything to think about if someone were going to pick one versus another, the superiority of say using uh, isometric straps versus a band-based system and supplementing with traditional resistance? Um, or, I mean, because that's the argument I've heard is that people get in that debate, they'll say one versus another. Uh, cause I think another part of this take two to this question is I'm horrible at this, just leaving it and live it on the die first. But the, the question of hypertrophy, cause I asked it in the first interview and you're, you're really honest about this too, cause you promote isometrics a lot, but you also don't sugarcoat the idea. I think I've said to you before, which is, can you build, you know, hypertrophy with isometrics? And I think you've told me before, well, like, no, you can build strength density, but not the muscle size, maybe as much. And am I correct me if I'm wrong on that? So do you think maybe that's where bands might win out over straps? So kind of loaded question there. So bands versus straps, could that could straps be a variable, you know, uh, contender with resistance bands? And can one or more or less be superior to hypertrophy? Um, I would say that uh, 
as far as <laughs> this might sound weird, I feel like as as far as hypertrophy is concerned, um, it still comes down to um, are those two factors in play? Um, with that being said, I don't think that any of them are particularly better than the other. Um, the re if if someone's going to go the resistance way, um, they just need to make sure that that there's enough um, load on that band that it's tough enough to to stimulate that hypertrophic response. Um, as for the the uh, the isometrics and um, hypertrophy, um, you can build um, you can uh, trigger hypertrophy with isometrics. Um, is it the optimal way? No, not really. Um, the even though you can do it. Uh, uh, in Paul Wade's isometric manual, um, they they have like this graph. I've only seen it like a thousand times already. <laughs> um, and um, they did say that the concentric phase of the lift is what's going to get you the the most um, hypertrophy. Um, but isometric was right behind it um, okay. on on that graph. But uh, yeah, I, I, as far as like bands and um, and the isometric strap, no. As as long as it's as long as it's enough, not give. As long as it's giving you enough force feedback, I don't know if I'm saying the right term here. Um, you're going to get what you want out of it. So I think one of the big allures that people pick up with bands is kind of what you said at the start with that guy's channel. And I've heard this a lot that people will say, I got into bands because uh, I just less wear and tear in my joints. And I've said before, and I know a whole video on this, that I think some of that just comes from, well, there's no ego with the band. And you're not putting all these weights. So you start lighter. So you're less likely to do that wear and tear versus picking up a light barbell and going light, you know, a slower tempo. I think that's half of reasons why people feel that. Cause I know, I know you can overdo with bands because I've overdone it with bands, but people start gravitating to them maybe for that reason, but maybe just try something different, but the sake it's just portable. And so what I'm trying to do, even this video is kind of highlight those same kind of benefits and shed some light on just how flexible and portable and also advantageous using isometrics is and just in general, whether it's straps, iso chain, whatever. And so uh, what I do find though, along that, that line is that I think people don't find this as attractive. People find bands attractive. You get that pump right away. Uh, is there something with isometrics that you think is maybe that you would sell to people or, and, or do you feel like is it a hard sell? Because I kind of feel like it is a little bit of a hard sell to people with things. I honestly, I, I think it's a hard sell. Um, to be honest, uh, and I've mentioned this on the channel quite a few times. Like, what really keeps me coming back to, particularly the ISO Max, and sometimes even the Bolt Worker, um, is the fact that they have some type of measuring function to it. Um, so with the Bolt Worker, it's that telescopic pipe from like one to a hundred or whatever. Um, or 120. Um, so I mean, you see how much you just did with with the uh, with the bulwark, and the same thing with the isomax. You see what it is. So without that, I feel like it's it is kind of a tough sell because then now it's just you're you're back like 40, 50 years. It's just like I am just what am I doing? It's like it's working, but how much is it working? How effective is this? With um some type of quantification, it does make it a lot easier. So and in in, in, this, in essence, the dyna, the dynamometer is what sells it. Yeah, I think maybe it's, it's probably a personality type too, because I know it's like yeah, I even just if I give it to my kids, my bull workers in my living room all the time, so my kids always all like competitions randomly. They're trying to yank and get the highest score, so that's definitely there. That's a real thing too. But then I see with the ISO chain, ISO max, I start when I see numbers, I'm overthinking it, and I'm just okay. You know that can happen to me, but. I'm probably the opposite. Like with bands, why I like them is, yeah, I'm just going, if I'm going to use bands, it's just more, okay, let's go with the feelings, go with that, that time under tension, go to failure. You're Sometimes you end up just chasing the pump because the pump feels so good on these things. And there's no quantification. I mean, I don't know what this purple one is compared to the other one. They also are going to lose elastic, elasticity a little bit. Of course, you can track the same consistent band and what you got last time, of course. But um, I just think even with like, just pulling on isometrics, I think if there was an idea that, I can actually gain some muscle or do some damage with just you're telling me that's actually I was trying to tell even like my parents a while back about them just because like they're not as mobile and they like to just keep themselves you know physically fit whatever if they could just tell me yeah just yank on this thing you know do a couple of core movements do this for a little bit of time a few times during the day being a benefit I wonder what would be if people would still use it versus this gives you that feeling of lifting and this gives you like you're stuck in the sand and you're trying to like get out of you know what I mean <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, I that wasn't really a question, but yeah, I was just trying to think of another way to kind of, I'm trying to see push this as an advantageous method, but you're saying what you found is really the, would you find, I guess that's the other question. In your experience working with people, you do find that people are more likely to use isometrics if there's a tracking, tangible way of tracking. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, um, and, and that even extends into yielding isometrics. So, you know, I've, I've had, I, and I still do have clients in the weight room um, where I'm just like, all right, here for the last set, we're going to hold this weight for this 20 pound dumbbell for 10 seconds on the 10th rep and just let the burn hit, let all that lactic acid waste product build up, build up. Um, and then that's going to be the end of it. The, the, the goal is to totally fatigue the muscle. Um, and I wanted to add on to uh, what you just said about the um, the band, because it's, you said it, you can feel it right, right there. Um, that's if we're just using the, uh, the isometrics just for strength. Now, if we started to hold it for time with um, a little less than 100%, then that's where we're going to start to get into that hypertrophy. And that's where it comes from. So um, in the same sense of three sets of um, eight to 10 to 12 reps in the weight room for hypertrophy versus like the three sets of like two to four for strength in the weight room, um, when we start to do about 60 to 85% of our max holding for 45 seconds for isometrics, that is where that size comes from. Because bo again, both of those were checked off versus just going for six seconds all the time, which is great. I mean, fantastic for strength, but eh, it's for hypertrophy. You know, I'm happy you said that because that's actually kind of the focus. I probably should have even started with this because yeah, those caveats, because yeah, I think that was, that's kind of the camp I'm talking about is that that longer hold, that burn type of hold versus like, oh, I'm just going to do stuff. And that can be, people can overdo that too fast. And they start to be able to start telling me, oh, it hurts my back. And well, you just, you know, just went into that too fast, no form. And you have, you're great about saying that. And I'm horrible about actually doing it, but you got stuff with uh, just emphasizing that in videos about form and isometrics. But that's what we were talking before we hit record about. There's a whole side, whole side camp of um, what's called time static contractions, which is I've said I was what I've learned is kind of more so overcoming isometrics, but with that time. And I'm finding that time is generally that 60 to 90 seconds. And someone might correct me if I'm butchering this whole uh, ideology here, but what they were doing is they're picking a movement, it's some key movement patterns, and sometimes they emphasize doing it on it could be any, it could be to emphasize a weak body part, it could be maybe you don't have that. Maybe I don't have a good leg curl machine, so I'm going to use a time static contraction to maximize that unique uh, movement pattern. And they'll get to saying it's 90 seconds or 60 seconds, but you're kind of ramping up 50 seconds, like 50% hold, 75, 85, and you're kind of going to like kind of 100%. But it's that longer duration kind of hold, I guess you want to say hypertrophy based stuff. So yeah, just kind of going a little more with that. What do you think the effectiveness of that? And if I'm someone hearing this, could I theoretically... And you can comment if it's if it's inferior, definitely comment on maybe how much. But let's just say, uh, could I theoretically in my like easy brain, instead of going and doing like a hypertrophy based workout with dumbbells and barbells, let's say I'm traveling, I got my straps. Can I go and do a workout? Or let's just say I do a whole three months of this. And I'm going to do key patterns, pressing, pulling, curls. And I'm going to do those holds. Can I expect to kind of build some hypertrophy and, or what do you kind of think of that training of using a band in that kind of fashion? So, and just, just so I'm clear, we're just talking about bands right now, right? Oh, so oh, I saw like straps, straps. Oh, stra oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes. Yeah, so as long as the diet and the, um, the cardio is matching that, yeah, you can build on some size. Um, and again, I, I know I probably sound like a broken record, a broken record because you guys are like, Hey, you said that already, Chris, but, um, as long as that load and the time under tension are correct, it doesn't matter whether it's dynamic or static. Your body just cares about are those two factors in play. Um, so as long as the program now, if those all three of those are in check, the um, the diet, the uh, the cardio, and the um, the uh, the strength training are all in check. Um, as long as the programming and the uh, the frequency are good, yeah, you're gonna build some muscle. Um, I. Uh, but is it, but seen... is it the same though? I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt you, but just so I, cause I feel like in that last video, I'm not like, there's no way I'm calling you out. I just want to clarify. anything, but I thought you were saying something to the effect where like the isometrics works in strength density, but it was a little lacking hypertrophy. But if, if I'm just hearing this from someone who's listening, might be thinking, man, if he's telling me it's the same and I don't need to do any more, any more or less dynamics than I have to, 
just the, are you saying that's pretty much the case so i really if i don't have to do bicep curls or just whatever i can just stick to just that isometric 90 degree hold or whatever and you're thinking that's is that pretty much equal or would you say it's inferior or anything any more comments it, than that it's just a little bit less and the only reason why is because you're going to take a little bit of a hit in your muscle stabilizers because <laughs> they're not even in use um so you might have the uh the increase in strength and size, but um, you might feel a little weird. I I remember um, when I did a uh, a thirty day. Uh, let me just sacrifice weightlifting for isometrics. And by the way, I freaking hated that. It worked, but I hated it, and it burned. Oh my god, did that burn? Um, I did notice some differences. I even had like a before and after. Um, I did I did like it. Would I do it again? Eh, I don't know. It was kind of dreadful, in my opinion. Um. But yeah, in in essence, yeah, because again, those two things are in play. Um, I would say that it's kind of, I think you just need a little bit more motivation for that because of how how tough it, it burns. Um, but on the flip, you're not going to get as much um, uh, mechanical abrasion, uh, something I actually just talked about recently, uh, which is the wear and tear of the joints over time of uh, weeks, months, years of lifting. And that just, it comes with, with the territory. We're going to lift weights for years upon years upon decades. We're going to start shaving away at those connected tissues. That's just part of the game. Um, but with the isometrics, you don't have that. In fact, some of the opposite starts to happen where you're actually strengthening the connective tissues. And so that is a win there, even if it is hypertrophy um, with isometrics. Um, it doesn't matter if it's um, hypertrophy or strength. With the isometrics, you don't get that mechanical abrasion, which is nice. Um, but at the end of the day, though, still you're going to get even more hypertrophy from the concentric than the isometric. It's just that the isometric also does it. I don't. Hopefully, I didn't go over. No, that was awesome. I, I think if people hear that, I mean, I get excited here and next. I'm like, well, that means like instead of packing all this junk or if, if it, I guess people's brain, they might be like, well, how much percentage less is it? You know, but I think it's so awesome. I mean, that, that, that's the thing I really want to have you on and kind of sell that if that was even impossible or just your experience, you've done so much work with it and just yourself experimenting with it that I think that could be just a big selling point. Cause a lot of people, it's like, I think they'll sacrifice equipment, uh, maybe even comfort, like all these like, you know, bells and whistles, if they got something that they can do, that's just really easy and they can just do, and there's no, you know, gotta get to a gym or I can do this in my office and get some results. I think that's pretty cool, but I don't think people ever really heard that, that that was a possibility and, or they're thinking again, logistically kind of, how would I do that? Which maybe I, that would be a good kind of wrap up question, how you'd put that together. We should probably do that. Or we just share really quick what you did, but I'm going to, I know you were going to say something. Yeah, and that, that's a good question because it's it's so funny. And I love that you asked me these questions because about three to four years ago, I'd be like, dude, that's BS. Like, come on. You know, because I've been lifting for, you know, January 1st, I've been lifting for 15 years. I'm primarily weightlifting. That's how I built my physique. So, like, just to hear these claims are just like, okay, dude, what are you selling? You know, but, like, um, at the end of the day, though, even though I know, like, we do make emotional decisions. I, like the logic has to be there. And it, and it just, it is. And like with the isometrics, as far as um, how would you do that? Um, as long as the programming's on point. Um, and I feel like uh, with some of Dragon Doors, like um, uh, the company I made, the Isomax, uh, for those that are just viewing in, um, they really did well with like, an intro to isometrics for trying to get result A, B, and C um, type programming. Uh, so there's uh, one um, that just, oh my God, it sucks. It's called the Iron Man that they came out with. And um, of all the programs that they created, that one is by far um, the most hell on earth type program because I mean, you are just burning. Uh, their, their goal is um, to build up muscular endurance um, so think of like uh, someone that's doing relatively light weights for like 15 to 20. Um, so you're holding 20 to 30 percent um, of your maximal lift, which is why the um, the scene of display helps. And it doesn't have to be the isomax. You can get your own dy dynamometer. Um, but then as you see the seconds go by 10, 15, 20, it, it's like it just lit a match in your muscle fibers unlike anything i remember like my bicep was locked 
in place and I had to stop the video for like 15 minutes <laughs> so I could continue recording. And I'm like, I have not felt anything like that before. And I love training biceps. I'm like, what in the world um, was that? And I was sore after that too. And that was just an isometric. I didn't even do anything else that week. So I'm like, whoa, this is the real deal, you know? And so uh, it, it it came down to, I believe that program was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And, and correct, I, I can um, put that, that was on a, That was a muscular, and, it's billed as muscular endurance program, but you're saying it's kind of like a hypertrophy-based program? Oh, that's in the book. Yeah. And that's in the book you're saying that's in the book okay. yeah okay yep and they um they had another one that was strictly hypertrophy based um called three days on um and so that's where we're holding for the um the uh 20 to 45 seconds that last one i just mentioned was a minute to two minutes uh, but even on the 20 to 45 seconds um we jacked up the uh the the force production from 20 percent to now 60 to 85 percent of our maximum so now we're hold, we're pulling a little harder so it's going to start to fatigue quicker um but we still have to hold it for the the requisite amount of time the time and attention um has to be correct and in that case it's 20 to 45 seconds at that load and yeah and it just it just makes sense it's just like um if i were to go into the gym and do one set of 10 at the weight that i need and the uh the reps that i need that's still not enough i need three sets of 10 to get well, the hypertrophy you're gonna Hopefully get people you're gonna get people mad about that one too but that's because <laughs> I've, I've, I've been experiment i like i think yeah I, I agree with i think that for sure works i've been dabbling with the like the one set the ultimate failure the high intensity stuff for the last like two months but i'm an, i'm with you too i'm just trying for fun uh another way it works if you put an effort but yeah i think that's you're gonna have people yelling at you for that one <laughs> but yeah, no, I love it. What I think you got to do, man. I mean, you got to make a program for that because I'm telling you right now, I'd buy it. Like just, that would be something just like a hypertrophy based isometrics program that you would put together. Cause I was going to say, well, what would you do? But I don't want you to do that. I want you to save that. And you got to put that together in paper or something, sell that. Cause okay. I think you, you got to do that, man. <laughs> I would buy that in a second. Cause I think that's what, that's what's going through my head as you're talking about this. And I always try to put myself in the viewer's shoes. Like if I'm hearing this, I'm getting excited. Like, man, you tell me, cause I get excited about just, you know, training concepts in general, like you do with this stuff. And uh, yeah, the bells are kind of going off of like, man, maybe I, why not try that for a, a couple of weeks and see just what happens. So. Oh, by the way, and I was just using three sets of 10 as an example. I mean, there yeah. are. Right. Different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it doesn't have to be only three sets of 10. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I got that. I'll just, when you, yeah, I'll just, I'll pick, that world is in my brain from, yeah. So, um, that was really, the, that was kind of the main stuff I wanted to get out there. I mean, I think we hit all the, the main cylinders because that was what the, really the take home point I wanted to say. And uh, if you're thinking about something else, just definitely chime in. But I'm trying to encourage people as I'm seeing this huge rise. And I don't know if you see it as much. I probably see it as much because I'm talking about these like band products and I get to see everyone who's really into it and all the stories. You literally write to me just to tell me how much they love a particular band product. And I'm always shocked. And I can kind of see it because the main thing I see that they like about it is the common thing is I don't have to think about what I'm doing. It's a simple program. I'll say specifically the X3. They like it. It's just a simple card, but that's just what they marketed, which makes sense. It's a simple product. I can get up and just anytime. The one guy told me, he's like, I can get up at 1 a.m. If he's an older guy, he's like, I can get up at 1 a.m. I'm going to go to the gym. I can just do a set, one set, and I'm done. That's in their programming. But I can see, I'm like, and I'm thinking about this. I'm like, I could see isometrics being the next wave of stuff and i think it just might be because it's not as attractive looking sa bands and maybe they're not getting that same feeling but it might just be i think like everything with fitness they don't really know where to start they don't know like say what exercises like i'm saying what position should i get in because i'm not moving so like well, what's the ideal bicep position what's the ideal uh overhead press position and then once i do do that how many seconds do I hold it? And how do I progress? And, you know, not only that, like maybe you're only doing the six to 10 seconds. You're like, that's a different stimulus, a different feeling than the 60 seconds. And you might replicate that sensation you got from the bands. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think you come in. That's why I want to have you on here because I'm thinking like, this is because they look at you. You're, you're like the definition of hypertrophy right here. So you're like, we can put you in a textbook. And so I think you'd be the person to talk about this because I think, uh, you know, no offense to anyone else. And this, this, this just goes off. doesn't necessarily show this is what you get from the training. But I think if you look at like isometrics or you look at body weight stuff or you can say anything, bands, it doesn't mean anything because it's just one person's perspective. But 
Uh, I think people think isometrics are thinking like either old school black and white photos, which you even covered that too. Those guys using isometrics were using other stuff too, which you kind of highlighted that the Bob Hoffman stuff. But then um, just, or they see someone that's kind of, you know, maybe a skinnier guy and stuff like that. And they're not seeing the potential that could be there. I think because no one's doing it. No one tried it. Cause even talking to you, I know I, I had different thoughts already going into it. And now hearing you, I'm like, I, no, I kind of want to try some stuff. That was a lot of stuff. I'm just thinking, do you have any kind of final thoughts on that? No. Um, you know, what's funny is uh, I actually mentioned this in a, I can't remember what video it was, but I did say, and I still stand by that when I get older and I mean like, probably over 65, I'm probably going to transition to just isometrics um, because as long as it's measurable, which I'm sure at that time it will be, um, because I just want to maintain my joint integrity for as, as long as I possibly can. And then like do some like calisthenics to make sure I get my movement, don't use, uh, don't lose my stabilizers. Um, but while still keeping the strength that I've built up at that point for over decades, um, which is, very, it's just so good. It's so good at doing that. Um, but yeah, that, that's 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 all I would end up closing it with. And I still think that resistance bands are absolutely fantastic for almost the same thing, um, just dynamic. And and it's not that uh, static or dynamic is better than the other. They both have their role to play. I think they're great in conjunction with each other, in my opinion. Um, but I feel like I'm trying to give like a gray area answer and it's not my intention, but they're both good. <laughs> No, yeah, you're good. And I don't even know if we did it justice about just the, all the pro, like the unique pros and cons of each one, because I, I think I said at the start, but the argument I heard against bands is that, yeah, I mean, there's, they can potentially snap and I'm like, okay, well, you'll, you'll know if they're going to kind of snap and just look at your bands and stuff, but I'm being stupid, but uh, the versatility part, I think with bands, that is one thing that you can rig it all sorts of 90 different ways to get what you want out of it versus bands. It's like, like a pressing, like a, like a bench press with a, your bands that can be hard enough. But with this thing, lay on your back with a bar or band, just press and you're good. What I'll just wrap up with, uh, and thank you for your time and everything is just, I mean, I don't know. You, I think you're a pretty humble, modest guy, not selling yourself too much. I want to say anyone wants, you know, isometric training to definitely check you out. Cause you do still do online personal training and all that stuff too. I do. Yeah. So, I think this is actually a skill and you have all the stuff that's in there. We can't do it justice in one video. So definitely check out Chris, Chris and no limit squad, I'll put his information down below and he can give you detailed information. So you were like, well, I, I want some detailed metrics. Cause that's something that's right up his alley is the metrics and you've got all this stuff floating in your brain. So I think you got a really individual and uh, unique skill. I think people can take advantage of. So definitely check you out. So I appreciate that brother. Appreciate that Mike. All right. That's it. I'll see you, man. All right, we'll see you, Mike. All right, cool.